So I wanted to re-record this just because um, a lot of folks popping in and out as I was trying to talk at the beginning of practice. So um, intention for practice today is very much uh, rooted in this idea that we do not have to be good. We don't have to be good at something for it to be worth doing. In fact, at one point we're going to do a little bit of practicing doing some really hard transition stuff that we're probably gonna fall out of a bunch. Um, actually, since I already did it, I'll give you a spoiler alert. I fall out of it all of the time and it's still worth doing. Um, I talk about like, yeah, go ahead and fall because there's something in that process of like your brain and your balance realizing like, oh, okay, well I fell because I was kind of off this way. And then you learn more about how maybe not to fall in the future than maybe you do because you find other ways to fall over. There's endless uh, ways it seems. But in Buddhist philosophy, there is this ever-present truth that all of life is suffering. And also there's the truth that the way that we move away from being affected by suffering is to not be attached to it. But there's still suffering. Things still suck. And that doesn't make life suck and not worth living. It's just it's like, okay, let's not be attached to the stuff that sucks. And the Yoga Sutras, they say, um, the first two sutras, the first one is the practice of yoga begins now. Now. Like we just started. You may not know anything else about yoga. And it's just like, we practice now. This is where it starts. Okay, good. I'm in. And then you're here and you're doing it. And the second sutra is that yoga is the ceasing of the stirrings of the mind. And it's like, shoot, how did I get from, okay, it starts now when I know nothing. And then all of a sudden I'm supposed to be in this place where I'm able to just completely smooth my mind over. Where's the in-between? Everything is the in-between. Everything is the place where we fail and we fall and we get back up again and we have triumphs and we have disappointments and all of it is relevant and all of it is important. I talk about good human qualities as being maybe a good way to think about a lot of this philosophy stuff and it doesn't mean that it's I'm a perfect divine human. It's more like I am human. How can I, I find the goodness within her? How can I find the places I'm not so good but being more aware? There's a Mary Oliver quote that I want to share at the beginning of a poem of hers. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. So begin loving our body with a little bit of um, face brushing here. Take the index finger and your thumb together. Move from the center of your forehead outwards towards your temples. And then from the sides of your nose out to your temples. And the temples down to your chin along the jawline. And from the sides of your nose down to your chin along your laugh lines. In your fingertips underneath and behind your ears, massaging upwards, lifting upwards, letting your hands rest down comfortably in your lap. Take a few breaths, settling into your body, noticing what feels good and not so good today, being observant, not judging. Take another big breath in through your nose. Big exhale through the mouth. Again like that. For three moments. Uh,
for practice today as you as you begin you're going to want to have a strap or a scarf i have two yoga blocks you could make do with one and you could also make do with anything that is about this size and dimensions uh, oftentimes when i didn't have them i used like a, a protein powder jug a beer growl or something like this something that you could just use to give a little bit more space to your hands to open your eyes. We're gonna come down onto our backs and we're gonna set up whatever it is you had that is squishy and adjustable. Like maybe you've got a small couch cushion to fold it over. Maybe you've got a towel or something to roll up. Make sure it's just real easy, real soft, real, um, real manageable to lay down with your shoulder blades on this support that you've got and then you should be able to rest your head back fairly comfortably sometimes the corners of the shoulders are going to lift up and so maybe you kind of scoot yourself back a little bit you should feel fairly comfortable if it's a little bit less comfortable go ahead and put your hands behind your head that'll help to lift your head up so there's a little bit less of that tossing back in your neck and what you can also do if you happen to have a blog or something like it or maybe like a really thick book, you can place that under your head and that'll help to support so there's a little bit less um, tension in the back of your neck. Okay. You want to come to a place where you can really just rest, like let yourself fall into the floor. Right. Go take a nap, please. You want to feel the fronts of your shoulders continue to unwind. We're going to have to find a different place for you to sit. Just let all of the sticky tissues in the front of your chest and shoulders keep unraveling themselves. Keep scanning the body for points of tension because it just seems like even if you spend all of this effort making sure that you've unwound something, if you start to move away from it, you look back and all of a sudden it's gotten tense again and that's just, that's just how the body works. It's a constant process. Spend about three more breaths here. start to roll yourself over so that you can take that, um, that pillow, whatever you've got, you're going to move it off to your side and then come back onto your back, make cactus arms and spread your fingers out, wiggle your shoulder blades underneath your heart so that your heart is open, the collarbones are open, and then take both of your knees over towards the right side. You can just let this twist be kind of easy. Okay, seriously. Let your belly soften into your twist. Let your jaw muscles relax. One more exhale. And then take your knees over to the other side. Jezebel, you need to go sit down. Check in with your collarbones, with the muscles in your face. Stay there for another breath or two. Start to take yourself back to the center. Gently roll yourself over. You're gonna press yourself up to a seat. Take your time. And then grab a block or something that you can sit on. Uh, should be something that you can stick underneath your hips, like so. And you're also going to have your strap. So if you have many blocks, you can set the block up in a higher setting in order to support yourself here and be able to sit 
Without any discomfort in the knees, great, do that. Maybe you also grab that cushion to give yourself a little extra support. If that's not working, if this shape does not feel good in your body, knees together, feet underneath you, just slide your legs out in front of you and sit in another way that feels pretty decent on your body. And we're gonna take the strap, we're gonna take it out in front of you, I'm gonna bring it a little bit wider than my shoulders. We're gonna take it up and we're gonna pause up above the head. Let the ears lift up and the shoulder blades drop down and gently pull apart on the strap as you try to reach that strap up higher into the air without sliding your shoulders up to your ears. It's like you're not really doing anything, but a lot of stuff is happening as you notice where the tension creeps in and where things start to get a little bit weird. Take another breath in, keep reaching that strap up and you might slide the hands out on the strap a little bit more as you bring the strap back behind your back. Let your low ribs soften and then reach the strap up and take it forward. Inhale, take the strap up. Exhale, lower it down. I'm trying to keep my torso fairly steady. Moving the strap forward and back. A few more rounds like that. Keep going. Excellent. Uh, one more time, go back and go forward. Shift, reach your strap up. And then you're gonna side bend over towards your left. You can even slide your hand down. You wanna still keep hold of the strap as you place the left hand down. And your right hand is just slightly in front of your head. And you wanna reach up on that strap. Okay. So it's not just a side bend where you're going over, you're really reaching up. You can even have a bent elbow. In fact, bend your elbow a little bit. Soften your low ribs in. Big inhale. Big exhale. Start to take yourself back up. And you're gonna take the other hand down. Bend this top elbow a little bit. Leave it slightly in front of your head and you're gonna reach the strap down with your right hand and pull up with your left hand. Excellent. One more big breath in. Stay there through the exhale. Take yourself up. Release your strap. You're going to set the strap off to the side. And then you're going to lay yourself down on your belly. Make sure you've got room out to the sides for you to make practice arms. And then you're going to take your left hand and slide it in underneath your left shoulder. Look over towards the left and roll your left leg back so that you're stretching the front of your right shoulder. You can leave the leg soft, you might bend into this knee, maybe you reach it back behind you. And keep thinking softening in the front of your right shoulder. Two more breaths. Roll over onto your belly and switch sides. You're gonna slide your left hand up, right hand into your shoulder, look over towards the right, and then reach this right leg back. Softening your belly, softening the front of your left shoulder. Make sure you're resting your head. One more exhale. And roll over onto your belly. Bring your hands in right by your low ribs. And with all of this big open chest space that we've uh, created, send your heart forward. Reach your toes back, cobra pose. 
And then notice how the back of your neck feels. If there's tension there, let it go. One more inhale. Exhale, lower down. Come up and down into Cobra a few more times. Inhale, reaching that heart up and forward. Exhale, soften it down. And as you move with your breath, notice where the tension creeps in. Keep that dialogue going of letting it go. One more time. See if you can get up a little bit higher and a little bit more open. And then lower down. Lift your belly up. Lift your hips up. Push the floor away. And then you're gonna take your right foot forward. Go ahead and grab one or two blocks. If you only have one, that's fine. You'll just change where your hand is. So I'm gonna take the right foot forward and then you're gonna leave the left hand on the, left, on the block or whatever you have. Now lift up your inner thighs, lift up your right shoulder, maybe lift up your right fingertips. I'm gonna push down into the bottom arm and reach from the heart up to your top fingertips. Keep softening your belly. Big breath in. Big breath out. And then come out of the twist for a moment. You're gonna take your front foot and move it out a little bit wider. Turn your toes out so you can bring your hips more forward and then bring your left hand a little bit further forward. Now reach back, so from the front and like this, my toe is out, I'm reaching back. And you can look towards that back hand, try not to fall into the left shoulder, you still want to reach down into that arm. Big inhale, big exhale. And then unwind your twist. You're gonna turn your toes back to the front, come back to the center. You might move your block over to the right hand. You might have another block over there. And my block is on the outside of my leg. You might have it up a lot higher if your hips are feeling kind of tense today. You're gonna to take now your left arm up in the air and reach down into the right hand. Open those collarbones. Reach the ears out of your shoulders. One more breath in. One more breath out. And then take both hands down. Come to the inside of your leg. You can have your hands on a block or two blocks to lift you up. If you can get down onto your hands, great. If you can bend your elbows, great. If you cannot do either of those things at all, great. Can you breathe where you're at? Can you feel what you're feeling? Just being present. One more exhale. Start to Come back up, walk your hands in, bring that right leg back. And then you're gonna take your left foot forward. I'll have a block or something to just be up on fingertips on the right hand. And then you're gonna reach up through the left hand. Let the belly soften so you have that adaptability in your center space. Reach from the center of your heart out into both hands. Make sure that your hip isn't gliding out to the side. You wanna keep those inner thighs lifted balanced in the pelvis. One more breath in. Big breath out. And then release that twist so that you can move your right hand further forward. Take the left foot wider. Turn the toes out. That'll maybe create space to let your hips go more forward. And then you're going to reach back. So we're still softening the belly, but the twist feels very different. Totally different alignment. Still open in the chest. breath in. Big breath out. Release the twist. You're going to come back to the center, bring your foot in. You're going to grab the block on the outside of your left 
hand or out of your left foot, or you can take the same block over. You're gonna come into a twist, opening yourself over to the right side, which is kind of a weird thing to do. Hopefully your left leg didn't move, like you didn't let the left knee fall in. It's still got it going forward. So lifting those inner thighs and reaching from the heart out into both arms. Excellent, two more breaths. Big breath out. Go ahead and take the hands down. You're gonna take both arms on the inside. Maybe you've got hands on blocks and you can bend in. Maybe you've got hands on the floor and maybe you bend your elbows. Maybe you're like, I have lots of space today and I'm putting my elbows on the floor. And it doesn't matter which way it is, just find a place where you're getting some good hip work and you're able to breathe. One more inhale. One more exhale. Start to walk your hands back and bring your left leg back. Spread your fingers out, press into your palms. Curl the toes and press back in a downward facing dog. Once you get in, out there, press your heels back a few times. Press from your shoulders into your hands. And then take a nice slow walk of your feet, little pitter patter of your paws up towards your hands. Bend your knees, soften down, release your head. Slow roll yourself up. Take your time getting there, up to standing. And then you're gonna take your hands, bring them back behind you, interlace your fingers and press the hands to the left side of your waist. Now draw the elbows down and back with your squeezing them in together. Lift up the front of your hips so your abs are still engaged a bit. And then drop your nose down towards your fingers. Let that right shoulder relax. Big exhale. Gently lift your head up and switch over to the other side. Hands to the other side of the waist, elbows draw together, fronts of the hips lift, and then look down towards your knuckles. Big breath in, big breath out. Start to lift yourself back up. You're gonna release your arms. You're gonna come into warrior one. Just pick a foot that's forward. <laughs> Let yourself be the guide of your own practice. We'll stay on this, um, in this shape for a while. Put the back heel down, toes forward, bend into the front leg. Reach your arms up. And get up a little bit higher, like when you were reaching and pulling that strap up, feeling that kind of length in your torso, and pull your elbows out as wide as you can. Then inhale, reach it up again. Exhale, pull those elbows as wide as you can. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, pull it out wide. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. You lift your heart up higher this time. Strong back leg. Exhale, pull the elbows out. Now wrap the opposite arm on top. So whatever leg is front, wrap the opposite arm on top. And then you're gonna soften your elbows in. And then take your elbows down towards your front thigh. And you might get like two inches closer or you might get all the way down here so that your elbows are there on the inside of the thigh. Maybe you can even drop further so that you're really using your legs and not resting on them at all. Notice what's tense, what needs to be tense. Can you relax your shoulders a bit wider, even with the arms down? And you can, of course, be holding uh, yourself like a hug, right? Last breath out. Draw your belly in, come on up, and then straighten the front leg. Take your hands to your hips. So we're gonna keep the legs straight. 
draw those shoulders back just keep your heart open and come forward over the front leg push into both feet one more exhale draw your belly in lift yourself up now you're going to pivot onto the back foot so i'm going to bend the front leg come on to the back toes i'm going to lift the back heel and then you're going to take your hands take them behind your back whatever the front leg is bring your hands over towards that side of your waist now instead of looking down to your fingers you're going to tilt your ear over towards your fingers i know and then when you feel all wobbly and like you're not sure you're really good at yoga or breathing or anything anymore, can you just lift your inner thighs, look at something that's not moving, stand strong on your feet and come back to your breath. Maybe you can relax that ear down a little bit more. Big breath out. Lift your head back up. Unwind your arms. Go ahead and step forward. And take your hands to the other side of your waist and drop your ear down for a moment just to make sure you're not super uh, lopsided. That we can do that all on the other side. Go ahead and lift your hands up, really, or head up, release your hands, and step the other foot back. So you just feel like warrior one on the other side, making sure that you're not crossing the legs. You've got some space, back toes are up enough that your leg can still be straight. And then reach your arms up your ribs lifting up, your heart lifting up to your fingertips, and then elbows pull out wide and strong. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, pull those elbows wide. Inhale it up. Exhale, pull it wide. Follow your breath, two more rounds. Now take the opposite arm on top. So you should have your arms wrapped up the other way. You have an elbow on top where you're um, grabbing back to your shoulders. We're going to soften the elbows in and then come forward. Kind of rounded spine, challenging the front leg to hold us. You're still going to stand on both feet, though. Use both of them. Soften your belly in. Notice where you're holding tension that you don't need to. Big exhale. Start to lift yourself up. Unwind your arms, straighten your front leg, bring your hands to your hips. You're gonna lift your heart, draw your elbows back, and then send your heart forward over your toes. Reaching the heart forward, elbows back. One more breath in. One more breath out. And lift your heart up. You're gonna bend into the front leg again, come onto the back toes, and then your hands come behind your back, and you bring your hands over to the same side is your front leg and then you're gonna look forward tilt your ear down towards your hands oh my gosh look at something that's not moving lift those inner thighs to keep your center engaged and try to relax that head over oh my goodness one more breath out lift your head up release your hands Go ahead, step forward <sighs> And then take your hands to the other side of your waist just to give yourself that extra little side thing. So just drop your ear down. And then come on up. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take the feet out really wide. If you have blocks around and you wanna maybe take a block to the inside, um, let's do the upside first of this foot. So take your legs really wide. I'm gonna turn my toes over, so my left toes are all the way over, right toes are in a little bit. Shift your hips, this top hip comes over slightly, and you're gonna come down into triangle pose. You might have that block be useful, you might be better up on your shin. Okay. 
I'm gonna take the arm up to start off with and reach your heart into both hands. And then I'm gonna turn my palm to face away from my head, reach my hand away from my head. And I'm gonna look down towards the bottom hand. And if I keep reaching this hand away, I find that place where I feel some stretch along the neck. Maybe you move the hand back and forth. And then take the hand back up. Maybe you look forward or look up again, feeling your collarbones open, your chest expand. Draw your belly in, stand yourself up. And then you're going to bend into the front knee, knee in line with the toes. We're going to come down into side angle. So you're going to bring your hand down maybe to the block. Maybe your elbow up here because that just feels better in your body. Be there. I'm going to take a half bind. So you're going to turn the palm face behind you, bring the back of the hand into the small of your back, and then use that to open your chest up. If you have a bind practice, you want to reach the hand under and maybe hold hands or fake it, you can do that. Not necessary if you don't feel like it or you don't feel like that's part of your practice today, but try to open your shoulders wherever you get. And now this left hip, try to pull it back towards the right foot. Draw your belly in, stand yourself up. Now you're going to take your right foot and you're going to bring it up towards your left foot. Wide legs, sit back and bring your elbows to your knees, hands to your heart, lift your heart up to your thumbs. You should feel how there's a lot more space to do that in your right leg. Big exhale, draw your belly and stand up. And then widen your legs again. You might take this block and bring it over towards the right foot. So I've got my legs straight, left toes go right over, right toes are, or, sorry, right toes are over, left toes are in. I'm hearing you. I forget. You're gonna tilt the hips, let this top one come over, and then bring your right hand down somewhere that makes sense to you. Try not to fall into the shoulder. We wanna keep opening it up. Reach the top arm up. All that reaching into both hands. And then you're gonna take this hand, press the palm away from your head, reach it away from your head. And maybe you move the hand back and forth in space, gently and slowly. And then take the hand back up. And just if you feel any more open in those collarbones across the heart space, draw your belly and stand all the way back up. And then bend it to your front leg. So I've got knee right above the ankle. I'm gonna reach forward, take the hand down or the elbow down, whichever you like. Start with the arm up. And then turn the palm to face behind you. Bring the back of the hand to the small of your back and use that to continue opening up the chest, but don't let your bum creep back there. You wanna keep it right underneath you. If you have a bind practice, this might be where you find it, but try not to be here. If you have to be here to get the bind, they're like, okay, well, that's enough. Now I'm gonna go back here. This is great, we like practice the bind here. But what you wanna do is to keep working on opening up this way, yeah? Wherever you're at, take another exhale. Gonna unwind the bind if you've got it, draw the belly and lift yourself up. Now you're gonna take the back leg, bring it up towards the front leg. Ugh. I'm finding that to be very hard today. I'm gonna face you as I do this and just sit your hips back and bring your elbows down, hard up towards your thumbs. Now, if this is hard, this is where your what's hard for your knees, you'll stay here and do this again. Draw your belly and lift up. What you might do is if you're okay with squatting, you're gonna bring your feet out wider, turn your toes out a little bit. You might have to do that little wiggle when we get down there, we're gonna come down into a squat. Yep, there's my wiggle. 
Okay, push down into the pinky toe edges of the feet. Okay. Heart up to um, thumbs, thumbs up to heart. Okay. So, what you might do is say, April, you have lost your mind. No, thank you. And you'll just make your way up to standing on your own. However, what you also might do is push down into your feet and stand from here all the way up. Booty goes back. And relax down. Okay. Now turn your toes to come forward again. Leave your legs nice and wide. You're gonna bend into your knees, fold down, and reach your hands for your ankles. Might instead kind of just be reaching down here and working on sending your tailbone back. If you can get your hands down towards your ankles, I'm gonna drop your head in. Try to roll your tailbone up. Big breath in. Big breath out. Unwind your arms, come all the way up. And then bring your feet in uh, more underneath your hips. So we're gonna do a little standing work and then we're gonna do some transition work and it's gonna be really, really hard and you might fall over and that's fine because you don't have to be good at yoga to do yoga and just be aware of what you're doing with your body and your breath and stuff, yeah? Okay. Stand on your left leg and take your right leg up for a minute. I want you to lift those inner thighs and feel yourself get up on top of your body rather than being back here. And then you're gonna hold outside of this thigh, stay lifted in the center, and then move that leg out to the side. Notice I didn't sit into my hip or sway back. Right up here. Lift those toes. Maybe open the other arm out, feeling strong and composed, even though you're expansive. Breathe in, and then drop it down. Then other side. You're gonna lift the leg up, feeling that whole center line of your body, like squeeze up through a straw. Then you're gonna grab the leg, stay up on top of yourself, open this out, maybe open the arm out. And don't just like let things be out, you know, just like, okay, limbs are here. Lift out of that space and also draw into your center. All that duality stuff. Breathe in and then relax the leg down. Look, I'll step out. Okay. We'll do a little transition work. We're gonna do this a couple times this way, which is kind of odd, and then maybe we'll try Bird of Paradise. So even if you have a Bird of Paradise practice, consider doing like some of the, these awkward leg lifting things, because I think the hardest thing about getting into Bird of Paradise is physically getting up into it. So we're gonna practice a couple of things. And what you want you to think about is the way that an elevator works. So an elevator has this counterweight. And if you have the counterweight consistently going down, so that's your foot consistently pushing into the floor, that's how the elevator rises. If you're like kind of pushing into the floor and then like snip that cord to the counterweight, you're like, oh, I don't know, maybe, and like give up, then you're gonna go crashing down. So we need to have that consistent connection to that counterweight of just pushing the floor down. So just go for it. You might not end up getting up. You might fall over, but you're probably gonna fall over if you let the energy into it go, yeah? So bend your legs. We're just gonna come down here. So I'm gonna stand up on the right leg. I'm gonna grab the left leg. I know I need to get over this leg. I know my feet are a little bit farther apart. That's part of where this transition is because you can't hold bird of paradise with your legs together, right? So feet are about hip width apart, hands on your thigh. So you're gonna cue yourself to push down in this leg, stand up. Good. Yeah, and then set it down. It was really smooth. I saw some shapes that were very smooth. It was cool. This went better for me now than it did earlier today when I was practicing this because we've been opening up our hips. Isn't that cool? Okay, other side. Come on down. So I'm in the middle because I can't have my legs together, but I need to get on top of the standing leg, push it down, hold it, lift it up. And try it again each side. Come on down. Hold the leg, go. Yeah. Yeah. 
down. All the way, push, go. Yeah, suck it down. Okay, so Bird of Paradise, the, the bind is crazy. We've done a lot of shoulder work today. You also have a strap. We did some bind work recently where we were um, doing the bound side angle. So what you might do is take, so if you're gonna do, it might be your right arm behind your back, your left hand comes in, you're gonna like kinda lasso yourself up here. But you wanna hold your hands as close together as you can because it's much easier to separate them than get them closer, right? And you might just hold on to the leg again, keep this hand behind your back. That's also fine. That's another way to challenge your balance getting up into it. If you do have the bind, it can be a little easier to do the bind. One thing I will caution you about if you have the strap, make sure you're not underneath your hip, that you're underneath your thigh. Because if you're underneath your hip, you're going to come up here. This is not the helpful bind. Yeah. Okay. So legs are wide. And then get down. You need to be able to get down inside of your legs. If you're going for the full bind, you might grab that strap and use it, but you might have to kind of like wiggle your shoulders in. We're gonna start with right leg standing. So you're gonna take your left arm back underneath the thigh and the right hand behind the back. Now you do have to get your legs a little bit closer so that you can make that transition. I just want you to get up. You don't even have to stay there, yeah? So push down on the right foot, stand up. Maybe you can open the heart when you get there and then you can set it back down. Take a breather. Yeah. And then same thing, other side. We want to move towards that expansive chest when we get up there. You might already have one because we've been working on it so much, but that's going to be the next direction of where to go. So come on down. Let me get snuggled in. Bring that left arm underneath. Right arm goes behind the back. Use the strap by all means. Try to bring that foot in a little bit so you're above your standing foot and then go. Ooh. Yep. Some days are better than others. Go all the way up. Yeah. It's like my first one was better. Yeah. I'm noticing that I'm doing it right now where I'm kind of getting like 90% up and then pausing. Don't get 90%, get like all the way up there, yeah? Let's try the other side. Just twice, just to see what happens. Put them down. Come your other arm comes up. You might just like hold the leg and take this hand behind your back. So kind of like do it one-handed to stand up the way we just did. You might take the bind, come over your standing leg. Right. Now come all the way up. Yay! Maybe open the chest, set it down. Or you've had the hand behind and just come up to hold the leg like this. Same functional kind of things. Holding hands behind your back is just weird monkey business, okay? So come on down. And then you're gonna slide. You leave that right arm underneath. I'm gonna come in right over your left foot. You gotta get all the way up there. Go! And then come down. Okay. And if today was all of the worst bird of paradises that you've ever done because you keep falling over, or maybe today was the best bird of paradise you've ever done because you've never managed to get up that far before, great. We worked on some stuff, we did some balance inquiry and weight shifts and stuff, and probably ended up getting some good hip and shoulder work out of it, yeah? Okay, we're gonna take the block or something that you can sit on down. We're gonna do an easy squat. And an easy squat is one where you don't have to hold your own butt up. So come on down here. Feet are wide enough. You can bring your elbows on the inside. Relax, my shoulders open. The heart lift up. There's a little pressure between my elbows and my thighs, but not a ton. The tension that built up around here while you were doing all of that work of holding your leg up. Let it kind of separate. Breath in. 
and breath out. And relax your legs. Okay, come off of your block, move down onto a seat. You're gonna make a pinwheel shape with your legs. So one shin is parallel to one end of the mat, another shin is parallel to that. Um, that short side, the long side, depending on your setup. You can take your hands back behind you. Let the front of your pelvis roll up to your heart to stretch this thigh, or come down onto an elbow for both elbows. If your knee is lifting up, I want you to try to get up higher. Lift your hip up instead with the knee down. got the space there's the option of coming all the way down onto the floor there's no necessity for it and if you have no idea how you're gonna get up from here don't worry I've got a plan Give yourself another exhale and then the plan is that whatever way your legs are facing take that hand so on me right now if you're mirroring me that's your left hand walk it up Pass it over, walk it up. And then switch your legs over, we'll find the other side. Got this squared off pinwheel shape. I don't have the foot really close to my hip. I'm gonna move the body back. Start off by letting the front of your pelvis tilt up. So you're starting to open up this hip space. Leave the knee down. It's okay to lift this hip. Maybe to an elbow, maybe to two elbows. Maybe you come down further, maybe you don't. Find your breath. Take your, if you're mirroring me, it's the right hand that goes across. Kind of paddle your way up. And then take two feet together, knees are out wide in a comfortable placing of your feet towards your body. So it might be a little bit further than this like really tight bound angle. Maybe give yourself some room and come in to a place where your lower back can relax. I like to think of if you like take your hands to your kidneys and just kind of like offer them this cue to relax sideways. You're kind of letting that space get wider, further away from the spine. That can reduce a lot of the vertical tension in the spine on many bodies and if it doesn't work on your body or it doesn't work today, just find a way to be soft with yourself there. One more breath in. Breathing out. Start to lift yourself up. We're gonna come into pigeon. Uh, let's go for the right side first. You might grab a pillow. You might grab a block and put it underneath that hip. I have your hips squared forwards. So what I've got is my knee is out to the side and my hips are both facing forward. I'm not down onto the one side or down to the other. I want to be as much in the middle as I can. And I've got that block there to kind of help support me. I can still get a really good stretch even with the block. And sometimes for those of us who do have lower hips, having the block more just like touching the thigh can be a helpful place of support. But it's like that little extra oomph. Like if you have you're really like scared about like leaning over the edge of something. You have somebody's hand there just to make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Like, oh, if something did happen, I'm okay. And that's what this is. It's just like, oh, if something did happen, it's like a psychological cue. Your body says, oh, okay, we can relax now. Maybe you do. You come down on your forearms or and just find places to soften in your body. So 
of the rest who have found some tension craving in or found some holding or found that we were suddenly thinking about our Sunday night dinner plans, you are not a bad yogi. You are not bad at this pose. Come back from it, settle in, find something to relax. Another two rounds of breath. And then if you're down on your elbows, you're going to start coming up to your hands. If you've got this block near you, you're going to set it off to the side so that you can roll down onto that front leg and then swing the back leg up so that you can open it out. We're going to take a side bend up and over this leg, lift those toes. And then release from the back of your shoulder blade out through those fingertips. Try not to tense this space on the inside of the shoulder. Soften it. One more exhale. And then come up. This extended leg. Try to bring it in and fold it over the other leg. If that's not working for your hips or your knee, you're going to extend this bottom leg out. Try to hold the leg and twist your belly into that thigh. Relaxing, opening collarbones. Big breath in. Soften as you exhale. Release the twist. Just one exhale to twist over to the other way. Little counter twist and release. And then you're gonna unwind your legs and find pigeon on the other side of whatever you just did. Probably take this block with you just to make sure that you have something to support you. I'm not down onto one hip, I'm not down onto the other, I'm up in the middle. Make sure your knee faces out, you're on the top of that back foot. Start to come in. Any places to relax. permission to open in these spaces. Two more breaths. Start to come up. You're going to take the block out of the way, sit over onto your front hip, swing the back leg around. I'm just going to shift a little so I can see you. And you're going to slide down towards that extended leg, reach the opposite arm up and over, and you're going to continue to sink reaching out and softening this inner shoulder as much as you're able to. It doesn't need to be completely relaxed. If there's still some tension there, that's fine. It's just how your body is and your shoulders. That just means there's more work that you get to do. But give yourself permission to find whatever softness is there. One more exhale. Draw your belly and lift yourself up. You're going to take that extended leg Fold it up and over on top, which might involve extending that bottom leg out too. Stay as twisted as feels good in your body. Hug yourself into this thigh, back arm for support. Soften the low ribs down, but lift the heart up and wide. Breath 
big breath out. We'll use the twist. Just give yourself a breath to twist in the other direction. And then start to come out of it. So we're going to work our way down onto our backs. Um, grab your strap, take it with you. I'm going to slide on down there. So you take the strap and loop it around the bottom of your right foot. Wrap it around, wrap that strap around your hands a bit more. You can let this leg be bent if that feels good to you. Don't worry about it being completely straight. Don't worry about it being super close to you. Try to release your left leg out as much as is comfortable and then think like, what does balance in my hips feel like? Maybe that involves a little bit of that inner thigh magnetizing. Maybe you drop the right hip downwards a little bit, but I just want you to think of what does that mean for you? How does that resonate in your body? And maybe working with those balanced hips or you're not sure if they're balanced hips, starting to bring your right leg a little bit closer to you. Maybe that means you also bend your knee a bit more. Notice if you are holding tension in the left leg and what it feels like to slowly let that tension go. One more exhale. And take both ends of the strap into your right leg. You're going to take the right leg all the way out to the right. I like to kind of rest on the elbow, leave the hand, the arm bent and kind of hold my leg up like traction. And it's okay if you roll off of your left hip a little bit here. Can you soften your belly towards the left though? And that might help to balance the hips. One more exhale. And then you're gonna take this strap up going to hold it in your left hand, put your right hand at your right hip, turn your knee and toe out to the right and only move the heel over a couple of inches so you're barely crossed but getting a nice outer thigh stretch. One more breath out. Take the strap back up. You're going to release the right foot and then switch over to the other side to get that little boxer tape wraps. I'm going to try as hard to fold my hands up. Gently let yourself over the next couple of breaths. Let your right leg slide out. You might have a bent left leg. That's fine. A lot of times when we do the totally straight leg, it's to engage hamstrings. And we're warm right now. We want to kind of relax so that we can release them, maybe open up a little bit more stretchiness. See if you can explore that balanced pelvis idea on this side. One more round of breath. And take both ends of the strap into your left hand. Turn the left knee and toe out, and then take that leg as far open as you like. And even if your right hip is lifted up, I want you to take your belly button. See if you can, inside of your belly button, roll towards that right side of it. This is gonna turn on your abs a little bit. Do it slowly. Make sure you're not going too wild on your body. You've already been pretty wild today. <laughs> One more exhale. You're going to start taking the leg up, move the strap into your right hand, turn the knee and toe to the left and only move that heel over enough that you start to get some stretch on the outside of that left thigh. One more breath out. Back to the center. You're going to take the strap off of your foot. You might use it in the next pose because by popular request, we're going to return to Tibetan weaponry. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show from this side. It might be a little bit easier to see. Take both of your legs over towards the right and then you're going to extend your top leg so you can kind of catch that foot with your um, 
with your right hand. And then you're gonna slide the bottom leg down. Often, if you lift up and lift your foot, it's easier to find it. And then you can roll your shoulder back and then it's like opening a pair of scissors. Ooh, and slide that top leg up and over, slide that bottom leg open and out. Soften the belly, exhale. And then release both legs and roll yourself over to the other side. The top leg will extend out. <coughs> I'll hold on to the top foot. And then you might have to slide the leg down, look up, lift your foot, and then bring the foot back down. As you lay back down, open the opposite shoulder. And we are opening like scissors with the legs, softening the belly, and widening the heart. You might use a strap to hold one or both or one of the feet depending on what's hard for you to grab onto. One more exhale. And release the top foot and the bottom foot and come back to the center. I'm gonna take a more gentle twist around the salad. Just move the knees over to one side. Relax the opposite shoulder. Breathing in. And breathing out. And take the legs over the twist in the other way. Release the opposite shoulder. Let your belly soften. Take a breath in. And take a breath out. And when you're ready, come back to the center. And start to set yourself up for Shavasana. So you've got lots of things around you. Maybe some of those things help you to feel really supported and rested here. Go ahead and take whatever you need, whatever time and adjustments you need, and then find a place where you are ready to settle in for the next couple of minutes. And that might be more like a seated meditation. Take a brief survey of how the muscles in your face and your feet and everything in between feel and where you can offer some more softness and release even if it's like shit i already did that i already relaxed those eyebrows why are they all tense again i've been teaching movement and focusing on helping folks to relax their shoulders a little bit more open for many many years and you know what my teachers always come up and tell me <laughs> April, relax your shoulders. It never ends. This life, this practice. This constant process. Let's settle in for the ride.
You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. So you start to come back into this body and your breath. Take a moment to tune in to what you're feeling. Start to roll yourself over to one side, taking a moment of gratitude for this practice and the ability to share this time together. Start to work your way up to your own version of a comfortable seat. Take your time getting there. It doesn't need to look like yoga. You can sit up on any of the many things I asked you to grab for practice today. And bring your hands in at your heart when you arrive. We'll feel the practice releasing an ohm together. Big breath in. Uh, bowing down to the love inside of our hearts, the light and the darkness within each of us. Namaste. Thanks for being here. I am, um, we today, I had a lot of people popping in and out of waiting room status. So I'm gonna try to put up a post about that. Um, I would, I think we're gonna like do things a little bit differently. I'm gonna try to not start exactly on time with practice and with Dharma and everything. Um, maybe like kind of checking in with folks and like where your body's at for a couple of minutes. Um, just to kind of give a little bit more of a break there because I know it's really disruptive to us to and like for me to try to speak and then like let people in and wonder who they are but um, just kind of a heads up on that so thanks for being here I mean these times you know we have to find different ways and methods to make things work so <laughs> mm -hmm. yep always learning something I guess trying new things so yeah but I mean that's just how life is it's a constant process of learning mm -hmm. absolutely yeah well thank you so much this was very very good excellent thank you I'm going to try to re-record the talk at the beginning, too, before I post this on YouTube, so it might be cohesive. Have great Thanksgivings and gatherings of your household. <laughs> <That's what laughs> and stay safe. Yeah, you as well. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.